in or I've spoken way. to some really, really senior people there. And my guess is there is a an internal discussion still. Mm. There's a whole group. There's a large group of people there who are really strong Web3 people. And they're like, we need decentralization. We need um, interoperability of assets. Yeah. There are some people who want a more protected world because their monetization. I get it, right? Because people are paid on what they're paid on. And there's some guy who's going to be paid, some guy or girl is going to be paid for revenue that comes out of advertising. Right. And it's hard for them to accept that they'll be out of a job if they change it. These people are smart. They're really, really fucking smart people. I think the probability is much higher than the market expects that they figure this out. Fair They're enough. taking a massive bet, right? Twitter's nowhere really in this yet, but they no. could get into this. Twitter's never really been anywhere, you know. Google, I mean, Google have done profitable. nothing. Yeah. Google have done nothing. Apple don't really need to. They can accept tokens, mm -hmm. but that's it. I mean, it doesn't really matter to them. Sure, you could have an Apple coin, but just, it doesn't. But Facebook, I think, I think there's a higher probability than people expect. And will it be perfect? Will it appease the true decentralist? No. Will it bring a billion people into crypto and digital assets? Yes, that's why I care about it. I don't care about perfection. I yeah. care about the do adoption of this technology. Makes sense. Perfect or imperfect will lead to better outcomes in the end because, as you said, it's an iterative process of improvement. So if you start with a Facebook NFT, but you can move it around and do something with mm -hmm. it, you're in the game now. Yeah. And you're learning about the value of this stuff. I don't know because there's something else going on, which is dominance of Bitcoin is going down over time. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is not the main show over time. What we're seeing is all these other use cases as well that's coming out of the crypto space. So yeah, look, I do think Bitcoin just continues to accelerate. I use the log channel, you know, and it just yeah. does that. It just continues. It works like magic. And that's what network adoption looks like. So you project it forwards in a few years time, it should be a million dollars. That's kind of all we need to know. How yeah. it gets there, kind of irrelevant. When you say what few might... years, what 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 are what time frame are you targeting for that? Well, if you just extrapolate the log channel, it's something like three years. Oh wow. Yeah, three it could be it could be three, it could be five, but you know, yeah. not very long, right? Um But what's really interesting is what else happens in that. Yeah, because every new phase, there's a whole new set of opportunities that we get mm -hmm. given as the market matures, new things happen. That's what was really exciting to me. The kind of owning in Bitcoin and ETH, fine, you just keep hold of it, whatever, some XRP, some of this stuff, no problem. It's what else goes on. That's yeah. where really the excitement lies. Yeah. And I think the really big one that I talk about all the time, because I'm also involved in building a business involved in this is social tokens. So we barely seen them yet. So I talk about them. People go, I don't really know what you're talking about. Board Ape Yacht Club, well, Yuga Labs, amongst their three projects, had about an audience of about, call it 40,000 people. Those 40,000 people owned a bunch of OG assets. Then they launched the Ape token, and the Ape token is worth $3 billion or $4 billion as of today. Okay, where the hell did that come from? Four times the size of the original assets? It's because everybody wants to be involved in that community, and this is your currency to be involved. And we haven't started where this is going. Every sports team, every massive pop star, every film, movie franchise, fashion brands, it's all going this way. Yeah, so I think that metaverse is not one place. So it's just right. us getting more digital. Like you and I would have done this five years ago in person. We'd have had to book flights and all that. Mm -hmm. Now we do it digitally, right? right? So we're just used to this. So there's a bunch of experiences that are being built now. So this is like the first website. So it started with decentralized, Decentraland Sandbox and those, you know, I own a bunch of those tokens, but they're very clunky. In yeah. fact, to be honest, they're shit. But, but people are still building in Sandbox because they think something different's coming. Then we've seen what Epic Games has done in the gaming world, but we're not seeing that in the crypto world because it's not decentralized. But then you've seen what Punk6529 has done with this open metaverse built on that thing called um, On Cyber. And it's like, this is a full, high resolution web browser experience where you can put it on your phone, you can watch it on that, you can put it on your iPad, and it's incredible. I'm like, okay, that was a game changer. And 
Punk6529 saying, well, we'll just you can build in there. So you can build your, you know, BitBoy crypto community in there, show your NFTs off, all that stuff. The community can do it. And it's free. It's like, okay, this is really interesting. So Metaverse is coming at us fast. Again, it's one of those things that people don't see it until it's in their face. Yeah. But, you know, if if you and I talked about this five years ago that, you know, we're going to have media businesses and we just do it from our home um, by just using Zoom, people thought you're crazy. No, you need all these cameramen and producers and all that. You don't need any of it. Those yeah, I spoke to the head of Metaverse at Amazon. Okay. So he's the guy who deals with Epic Games and, and Facebook and their storage needs and their compute power needs, right? They get it. Mm -hmm. They're trying to scale this. I spoke to somebody from Advanced Micro Devices, you know, the chip manufacturer. They're like, we're trying to solve this too by figuring out how we can increase processing power. Then there's a bunch of people working on distributed computing power. So how do we just get that computing power using your phone and my yeah. computer and whatever it is, my fridge, um, trying to do that. And then as you say, there's ways of using tokens to define that. I mean, my guess is you'll be able to use the computing power in my Tesla um, you know, within the next four years um, that I can get paid tokens mm -hmm. for using my compute power because it sits in the garage all night. It's connected to the, to the internet and there's a very powerful computer in it. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're onto something there that, that um, all of this kind of way of solving this is a big deal. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.